dude, my spider team sucks and so does yours, else you wouldn't be watching this video right now. So, hey man, let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to cover what exactly the spider is going to be throwing at you in terms of mechanics. Very, very simple. We're also going to be covering every kind of component that you need in your champion team to take care of everything that the spider is throwing at you, right, and effectively counter the spider. And we're going to be covering a whole bunch of example champions that you can use to sort of fill these roles on your team, man. We're going to simplify this thing. And let's progress, boys. So as for the spider's mechanics, this is a whole lot of text. Honestly, this could be simplified down to it's going to spawn endless waves of spiderlings that attack in and apply poison to one of your champs at a time. Ideally, this is going to be your tanking champion, but we're going to get to that in just a bit. And the boss also has an attack all enemies skill with a good chance of decreasing your turn meter by 30% and also putting your champs to sleep if their turn meter is fully depleted by this. And all right, man, so what key ingredients do you need in your spider team to handle everything that the boss is throwing at you and get this thing done? Well, first of all, you're going to need a tanky champion on your team that is going to soak up all of the attacks from the enemy spiderlings. You're also probably going to need a crowd control champion that can attack all enemies and apply things like freezes or stuns. It's just going to help keep your tank alive, keep the waves under control. You are definitely going to need one if not two solid 10 meter control champions 10 meter controllers are extremely extremely important this can be champs that attack into the boss and reduce the spider uh, queen's 10 meter directly as well as champs that apply strong versions of decrease speed which is the 30 percent decrease speed debuff you're definitely going to want a couple of these having the spider attack in as little as possible is going to be awesome and finally you're going to need some max hp damage dealers this can be in the form of hp burners right who just spread hp burns across all of the spiderlings and the spider queen herself and of course anytime an enemy takes hp burn damage every other enemy who has a hp burn debuff also takes a percentage damage as well an alternative to hp burn damage in spider den is going to be champs that have skills that deal damage based on enemy max hp right that skill up in damage based based on enemy max hp all right man huge credit to mr the adventures of adam for this footage by the way that we're about to break down a little bit this is just a very very well oiled team in action as you can see mr amager is about to swing in with his a1 right here amager is one of our key 10 meter control champs and it's very very accessible because he's an uncommon champion so if you're just getting started in spider you're just getting started in raid chances are you can have pretty easy access to maxing out an amager and when he attacks in here he's going to cut down the 10 meter of the spider queen by a crap ton because yeah that's what he's on the team for so bam as you can see decrease the 10 meter by a whole lot which is just sweet also any attack that comes in from the spiderlings is being directed at our tank which is drex our blood twin who is attacking in just now so you'll notice that anytime the spiders attack in they're also going to be yeah attacking into the correct guy which is our tank, which is particularly awesome, by the way, because as you might have noticed, when those spiders were attacking in, they were also picking up an HP burn debuff from the Drexar, which, uh, Drexar, which is great. Drexar is very, very good as a spider's den tank for the reason that he is not just able to fill the tank roll, but he can also apply those HP burn debuffs to all of the spiderlings, which is just sweet. If you're super new to the game and you don't know why HP burn is so good in this fight, by the way, it's because every time an HP burn debuff ticks for a percentage of an enemy's health uh, as damage, it also triggers every other HP burn debuff that you've applied on everybody else to tick for damage as well. So if you get the HP burn debuff up on the spider queen, and you have the same debuff applied to all of the spiderlings. Dude, every time it ticks on the spiderlings, it's going to burn the spider queen as well for a massive chunk of damage. And that is also why crowd controlling the spiderlings is so, so good as well. We're going to see Syl of the Drakes attack in in just a second. And bam, there it is. And she stuns up all of the spiderlings. Why is that so good? Because once we've applied the HP burn uh, debuff to all of the spiderlings, we no longer want to kill the spiderlings. We want to leave them there burning, right? It's much, much better if we can control the spiderlings and just let the HP burn debuffs tick to burn down the boss, right? We actually still don't have the HP burn debuff on the boss right now, but you get the point, right? HP burn everything, crowd control everything, control the spider's 10 meter and you can't go far wrong now again there are other ways that you can take on the spider queen it doesn't have to be an hp burn style build but it is very very effective indeed that said let's cover a whole bunch of champs that you can kind of sub in and out to cover all of the roles starting with 10 meter controllers champ number one it's of course going to be armager again uncommon quality champ very very easy to get your hands on this guy 
All you have to do really is build him with 100% crit, a decent amount of speed and a solid amount of accuracy so he can land his 10 meter decrease which is on his air 1 right so it's spammable attack one enemy decrease the 10 meter by 30 percent if this attack is a crit as for how much accuracy stat you're going to need on your 10 meter decreases by the way for any new players out there if you're not sure how accuracy works generally speaking just take the stage of dungeon that you're on for example let's say stage 16 of spider's den and multiply that by 10 that's about how much accuracy you need. So if you're currently progressing on Spider Stage 16, then you're going to need about 160 accuracy to guarantee or roughly guarantee that your debuffs like 10 meter control are landing. Amager is also additionally good because he also has a skill that has damage based on enemy max HP on his A2. So if he doesn't have that much 10 meter decrease to apply, right? If the spider is only at like 10% 10 meter or something, then Amager will instead use his A2 automatically and smack the spider for just a whole bunch of damage. Another decent 10 meter controller, also an uncommon champion, is going to be Elfgard, who on her A2 on just a two turn cooldown fully bucked can attack one enemy and decrease the current 10 meter of an enemy by 50%. She can kind of be a good backup 10 meter controller. Is she as reliable as Amager? I would say not. I do want to stress that I'm trying to cover very, very accessible champions here as well, because I feel like that's generally the, the, the kind of people who this guide is going to be directed at are people like me, people who are still progressing, people who are in the earlier stages of their account, right? Prosecutor is a reasonable rare champ option. A little bit overlooked most of the time, but on her air one, she does have a double hitter with each hit having a chance of decreasing 10 meter by 10%. And she also brings the strong version of decrease speed on the A2. Hikatune is also another fantastic option. She is, of course, the 30 day login reward champ. So, very, very accessible. Everyone is going to have Hikatune, right? On the A1, she has a chance to bring that strong version of decrease speed debuff for the boss, which again, very, very valuable stuff. She brings some 10 meter fill and increased speed on the A2. And of course, the attack all enemies on the A3, which has a chance of decreasing 10 meter by 15%. Scylla is a higher quality 10 meter controller that you could maybe turn to in Spider as well. She has a lot of uses in Arena, but it's really all about the A3. Um, she will place a strong version of decrease speed debuff on all enemies for two turns and decrease 10 meter of all enemies by a massive 40% which is obviously excellent. She also has multiple attack all enemies skills on her A2 and her A1. And this means you can actually put her in something like a stun set so that her attacks have that chance to stun up the spiderlings as well. She can just bring a hell of a lot of control. Obviously, she's a void epic, so... Yeah, she's just going to be a bit harder to get your hands on. And last in the 10 meter controllers, we are also going to cover good old Cold Heart herself, who actually does multiple jobs, but we're going to put her in the 10 meter controller category. Honestly, Cold Heart is so good. She is an S tier spider champion all the way into endgame. Very, very good indeed. You can run teams with like two, three, or even four Cold Hearts and actually get away with it at higher spider stages, which is just sort of unbelievable, but there you go. Uh, the A3 is an attack one enemy. Decrease the target's 10 meter by 100% and has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a crit. So you can just build it with 70% crit, full 10 meter uh, reduction, and damage increases according to enemy max HP, meaning she can hit the spider for millions in a single click. Yes millions so those were your 10 meter controllers again you generally want to run at least two of those types of champs in your spider teams and hey man before we press on if you haven't already go ahead and make sure to input the happy promo code game leap to not only help support the channel but also get yourself 100,000 silver 10 free experience brews and a free energy refill and hey if you're looking to start off a new raid shadow legends account perhaps a new free to play adventure or something like that it would really really help me out as well if you were to make a new account by clicking on the promo link down below at the top of the video description by clicking the promo link down below you'll be starting off your new account with a free epic champion in the form of juliana as well as a whole bunch of starting freebies it is the best possible way to kickstart your new raid shadow legends adventure up. So yeah, man, go get to that. Next up, tanking champions, right? Your tanks, we're going to be tanking the spiderlings in the spider's den. Let's cover a few examples of those. But first, how does tanking actually work in red? So if you want a boss to be attacking into one of your specific champions, right? Your defense based champs, your tanking champions. A lot of it comes down to the affinity of the boss and the affinity of your tank, right? This, for example, right here is a spirit affinity spider stage. And as you can see right here on the affinities chat, affinity spirit counters 
force affinity. This means that if we were to build a champion team of five champs and just include any one force affinity champion, then that champion is very, very likely to attract the attacks of not just the spider queen herself, but of course the spiderlings. Now do keep in mind that the spider stage you want to be working your way towards and farming the most is going to be spider stage 20. It's very, very energy efficient for completing things like spider training tournaments. It's going to get you some really, really sweet rewards because you can no longer get full star artifacts once you make that jump to spider stage 20. It's just a very, very good stage to be blasting. This is, of course, an energy affinity spider stage, meaning that force affinity tanking champs are going to be your go-to, right? They're going to be your bread and butter. You might need to use some other affinity tank and champs to kind of get you there up to stage 20, and that can be a little bit excruciating, but just know that force affinity tank champs are kind of, uh, kind of S tier for this reason. So first off, we've got to cover the best of the best, a free to play a champ that anybody can get their hands on. It is, of course, Drexthar Bloodwin. All you got to do is be blasting tag arenas every day, farm up those gold bars from the tag arena, spend them in the bazaar, which is also located in the tag arena area of the game, and you can be buying one fragment of Drexar Bloodwin at Bloodwin Per day. Drexar is also good because, of course, he is a force affinity tank champ, meaning that he is very, very easily going to draw the aggro of all of the spiderlings. And not just that, not just is he, is he a good defensive option for tanking up on the spiderlings, but of course, on his passive, he has a chance to apply HP burn debuff to his attackers when hit. Also, this champion's resistance increases by 10 for every enemy under a HP burn debuff stacking up to 50. You can build him with a solid amount of resistance and make him very, very resistant to those poison debuffs from the spiderlings. Drexthar. S tier spider tank. And of course, very, very important, he also does have the chance to place HP burn on his A1, meaning that he does have the chance of actually placing that burn against the spider queen herself, which is kind of the whole point, right? You're trying to burn down the spider queen along with all of the spiderlings. It's kind of rough to find better and more accessible options than Drex that, to be honest. I suppose if you pull something like a dude and the runic, he can also do a similar job for you. He's an epic quality Sylvan Watches. Uh, tank. And so he's not super, super accessible. He does have the ability to apply a counter attack on himself and a taunt on himself with his A3, right? So you're attracting all the attacks of the spiderlings because he's force affinity. And then you counter attack in with the A1, which has a chance of removing debuffs from all allies. So he can be kind of cleansing many of the poisons as they're landing from the spiderlings from himself. Is he ideal? I mean, not really, he's kind of just a stand-in until you get your Drexlar. Another champ that you can that can do the job until you get Drexlar is gonna be good old Zephyr Sniper, another uncommon quality champion. And what you'll notice about Zephyr Sniper is that she is not force affinity, right? She's spirit affinity. This of course means that she's going to attract aggro in different stages to the likes of Drexlar and the other force affinity uh, tanking champions. She's going to do, have an easier time attracting aggro, I guess, in those stages. However, but because Zephyr Sniper shares spirit affinity with a lot of champions that you're going to want to be running, right, such as Armager, you don't want Armager to be tanking the hits, right? So you're going to have to build your Zephyr Sniper with stats like high defense and high resistance, but not necessarily high HP. You want her to have lower HP than your other spirit affinity champions, and that way the boss will still choose to attack her, and the spiderlings will still choose to attack Zephyr Sniper instead of your other spirit affinity champs. So there are ways that you can tank this thing without using force affinity. That's my point, right? Zephyr Sniper's build is quite interesting. You actually want her in a lifesteal set, and then you pick up certain masteries in her mastery tree to enable her counter-attacking capabilities. The result is going to be she's taking a lot of hits from the spiderlings, taking a whole bunch of damage, but she's counter-attacking just enough and attacking all enemies with her A1, such that she is then healing back that damage as quickly as she's taking it. It's a little bit risky, but it can work out pretty tight. And it's always cool to build an uh, uncommon champ and take on some harder content, man. All right, man, that's 10 meter controllers, tanks handled. Let's move on to the max HP damage dealers and the HP burners. Of course, we already covered Cold Heart. She hits like a goddamn truck. She's a 10 meter controller and a massive damage dealer, and you can totally build a team around her. As for the HP burners, let's begin with good old ultimate Gallic. Gallic's job is very, very simple. Use the A3. It's an attack all enemies two times with each hit, having a 50% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns, as long as Gallic is under an increased attack buff, right? So just bring the increased attack buff throw out the HP burns on everybody, happy days. Then of course you're just doing the same thing of, you know, keep your tank alive while they tank the spiderlings, 
land crowd control on the spiderlings, heal your tank a little bit if you need to, which is actually not something that I touched on, but if your tank is struggling to live, the fifth champ on your team could bring a little bit of healing uh, instead of crowd control. You do have that option, but just do whatever you need to do to keep your tank alive while HP burn is up on everybody and you can't go far wrong. Next up, another epic quality champ is going to be Akoth the Seared, who on his A2 has an attack all enemies, has a 20% chance of placing HP burn debuff for two turns. However, the chance of placing the debuff increases by 20% for each alive enemy. So yeah, it's going to be a billion percent in Spider's Den because the Spiderlings everywhere. Another option is, of course, Mordecai epic champ for the sacred order faction i also understand that all of these hp banners are epic quality uh it's really really hard to find a rare quality hp banner champ that's actually decent into spider but don't worry too much about it if you don't have a solid hp banner again you can just be working your way towards picking up drexthar via tag arena and drexthar will kind of do the job of tanking and hp burning for you right he's got that covered he's your fail safe if you don't pull any of these guys now mordecai of course on his A3, has a fully bucked 100% chance of placing HP burn debuff on all enemies for two turns. Very, very good indeed. The only thing about Mordecai that you've got to be careful of is that he is, of course, Force Affinity, okay? Lesson of the day. Like, the affinity that you're running into Spider's Den is just excruciatingly important. And as a beginner, it's something that maybe you just don't look at quite as much as you should be looking at it. But yeah, if you're running Mordecai and you're running into, stage, say, Spider Stage 20, where it's a Spirit Affinity Dungeon. You want to make sure that the Spiderlings are not attacking into Mordecai and that they're attacking into your Force Affinity tank instead. You do that by just building Mordecai with a very, very solid amount of health, right? A good amount of health, so he has significantly more health than your tanking champ. And instead on your tank, again, build defense stats and resistance stats. And that way, the Spiderlings will decide to attack the tank who they see as squishier instead of Mordecai who they perceive as tankier and harder to kill. Now you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You could just run Mordecai, you know, a bunch of other HP burners and then like two or three crowd control champions and just guarantee that you're going to hold the spider still for a long time and you could just not use a tank at all. That is a route that you could go down. And yeah, none of these roles are particularly super, super set in stone. And finally, speaking of the crowd control champs again, it's so, so important that you are crowd controlling the spiderlings once they are under the HP burn debuff rather than killing them. You want that HP burn debuff to stick around and tick as much as you can. Luria is a great option who on her A2 has an attack all enemies with a actually fully bucked up 75% chance of placing a freeze debuff for 110. This is obviously great. Next up, Sill of the Drakes is another fantastic crowd control option in Spider's Den for helping you get started. She is another login reward champ that you get after 180 days. So fairly accessible if you just stay patient as you play and don't sweat it too much if you can't break the higher stages of Spider and reach stage 20 with your roster until you grab her. She's going to make a big, big difference for you. She actually brings a bit of 10 meter control or at least the chance of 10 meter control and strong decrease speed on her A1, which is grit. On her A2, it's an attack all enemies two times each hit with a 20% chance of placing stun debuff. Goes up to a 30% chance to place that stun. Uh, fully bucked up. She has a revive on the A3, which is a great fail safe. If you're not able to protect your tank well enough, you're not able to heal your tank well enough or not enough crowd control lands or whatever and your tank dies, she can just revive them, which is awesome. And on her passive, she also heals allies by 10% of the max health at the start of each turn which is great. Healing in Spider's Den is actually something that I've not covered all that much and all that well uh, in this video, but having one or two heals uh, on, on some of your champions just to help keep your tank alive, something like one crowd control champion and uh, one healing based champion is definitely a route that you can go down as well. But yeah, Silver the Drakes kind of brings a little bit of everything. And finally, another really, really solid crowd control champion which again is a guaranteed champ that you will eventually get your hands on just from damn uh, farming doom tower fragments when you eventually get to the doom tower you will earn your way towards getting Archmage Helmet, who has an attack one enemy on the A2. However, it also attacks all other enemies if the first attack is a crit. The second hit has a 50% chance of placing that stun debuff for one turn, bookable up to a 75% chance of placing that stun on everybody. So just another fantastic control champ option. All right, man, I'm probably going to do a video in the future where I cover like every champ of every rarity that you might want to be collecting to take on Spider's Den. If I continue, though, we're going to be here all day, man. Let's instead break down just a few 
very, very budget Spider's Den teams that you could look to assemble and um, yeah, start to max out to take on the high stages if you are a newer player. The first would be a budget style Drexthai HP burn team. For that, you could be running Armager and Hikatoon, both very, very accessible 10 meter control champs. Seal of the Drakes, of course, free login reward champ, just giving you a bit of extra control. Um, big AoE stun on all of the Spiderlings and increased survivability because of their passive heal ticks. Drex that as the tank into Spirit Affinity Spider's Den stages, which could be stage 16 and stage 20 chiefly. And because he's going to be HP burning everything, you'd fill out the fifth slot with either a healer or another CC based champ to just help control the waves, something like a Luria. A very, very similar team that's also kind of like a budget HP burn team is just kind of subbing out the Drex that, right? You're looking at Armager, Hikatoon again, Again, Sill of the Drakes, again, something like a Mordecai to apply HP burn to everybody right off of the get-go. Then you can throw any old Force Affinity tank into the mix as the final spot. Again, just make sure that your Mordecai uh, has way more health than this other Force Affinity tank champ that you put in so that the Spiderlings actually attack the tank instead. Or you can just go with another crowd control champ. Let's just go with Luria again. And finally, for a budget max HP damage dealing team that's going to be built around Cold Heart. Again, you're looking at Armager. Sill of the Drex, Drex that, or any really force affinity tank. You're of course going to run Cold Heart, and then for your fifth spot, you're going to want any kind of champ that is applying the decrease defense debuff to make sure that your Cold Heart is really attacking in for millions of damage with her A3. Great champ for this role would be Deacon Armstrong, because he also brings things like turn meter fill to your team, as well as the decrease defense. But hey, if you don't have Deacon, then basically any decrease defense champ is able to do the job. Again, there's lots of champs that I want to cover here, to be honest. Ruella, Miscreated Monster. I mean, th there's a lot of really, really sweet and interesting Spider's Den champs that you can kind of sub in and out here. But again, I don't want to get bogged down by just making this another me covering champs for 40 minutes <laughs> style video. But I would love to do that if that's something that you guys are interested in. To wrap up, the most important stages of Spider's Den that you want to be farming, because this is important as well. If you're on the easier stages, it's best to not go beyond stage 10 stick on stage 10. Why do you want to do that? Well, it's nice and easy, right? It's energy efficient to farm for things like spider training tournaments and stuff like that. But stage 10 is also kind of bugged out a little bit in that it drops a inordinate amount of five star artifacts, right? It says it can drop fours and fives. I feel like 70 or 80% of the time it drops five star drops. This is like a known bug within the game. It's been around forever. Stage 10 is great if you're just getting started and you're not really able to progress down to stage 16 yet. So yeah, farm stage 10 for spider training tournaments and stuff like that. If you're really truly just getting started in the spider's den, stage 16 is another great stage to farm up once you get there. Stage 16 is almost like the warm up stage for building your real first Spider's Den teams because it is spirit affinity, right? Same as stage 20. So stage 16 is kind of like the training ground for stage 20. It's also pretty damn efficient to farm as well because it costs 14 energy and the next stage actually bumps up in cost a little bit as well. So farming up stage 16, also quite efficient. Um, it's just a nice little milestone for you to reach. And finally, of course, where you want to be farming is again stage 20. Best loot, Fantastic for spider, strain, uh, spider training tournaments. And um, yeah, most of the team comps that we've covered in this video are designed to tackle stage 20 for a reason. It's because it is the juice. And all right, boys, this was a long one. I hope you all did enjoy it. If you got something from this video, please do remember to hit the like button down below. And you know what? While you're down there, if you're looking to start off a new raid Shadow Legends adventure, maybe a new free-to-play journey or something like that, click on the promo link down below at the top of the video description box to start a fresh account using my promo link, man. It will start off your new account with a free Epic Champion and a whole bunch of starting freebies. And um, yeah, would be the best possible way that you could thank me for, you know, helping you get to grips with Spider's Den. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.